All right, so there's, as I said in the last video, there's this idea of, of there's a million or a myriad of different training methodologies you can follow. But in general, what we can do is we can break them up into two different kind of categories. And one is this idea of long, slow distance, doing a lot of distance but not going very fast. And the other is this high intensity interval training. The reality is most elite athletes, most athletes in general, are doing a combination of long, slow distance with high intensity exercise. But really what we're going to do is we're going to just give you this idea as training methodologies and we're going to epitomize them with specific individuals who best epitomize the two different training methodologies. So when we talk about the training methodology of using a lot of distance and using long, slow distance, the individual who gets associated with this is is this man named Arthur Lydiard. And Arthur Lydiard was a New Zealander, and he was a New Zealand track coach. And he basically um, created this incredible group of athletes in New Zealand that won incredible amounts of Olympic and world championships. His, his, he's most famous for saying things like, it's not the best athlete who wins, but it's the best prepared athlete who wins. And basically what his principle was is that long distances form the base of all your training. So when we talk about this as there's a base phase of your training where you're trying to build the foundation, the foundation for Arthur Lydiard always was built on long distance. And you only did fast running during the buildup phase at the end when you're getting close to competition. And what do we mean by long distance in this, in this foundational or base phase? All of his athletes completed 100 miles a week. And we say here in mostly in singles, that means they ran once a day over about seven days a week, six to seven days a week. So they're looking at, you know, about 18 miles a day. And that's fine. We look at that and we say, okay, that's fine. But you have to understand that most of his athletes were 1,500 meters, 800 meters athletes. They weren't marathon runners. So these are athletes who are running for two minutes, four minutes, maybe some 5,000 meter athletes who are going to run for, for maybe 12 to 15 minutes. These aren't athletes who are running marathons. So, so it's a really much bigger amount of mileage than you would expect from somebody who's going to compete at a much shorter distance. On the exact opposite, on the counter side of that, is this man, Emil Zadopek. And Zadopek was an incredible athlete. And he was in the exact opposite camp. He, he used to say, and he was famous for saying, why should I practice running slow? I already know how to run slow. I want to learn to run fast. And so what he did, his whole thing was to run high speed intervals. He never actually ran any distance. When he first won the national 5,000 meters for his country, that was the first time he had ever run 5,000 meters at once in his life. The way that he trained is he would sprint 100 meters, rest a little bit, and then sprint 100 meters. And he did that 50 times. He then, you know, over the years, he, he kind of clarified things and he really focused his training to the point where this was his training in the peak of his performance. He would run as a warm up five 200 meter sprints in 30 seconds. 200 meters in 30 seconds, that's moving. Uh, there's not a lot of people who can do that five times. But then what he would do is he'd follow that up with 20 repetitions of 400 meters. That's one lap around the track in 60 seconds. You know, a good Olympic 400 meter runner is going to run one of those in 42, 45 seconds. He's running it 60 seconds. Yeah, it's a little bit slower, but he's running 20 of them back to back to back. And then he has a nice cool down with another five by 200 meters. So if you look at that, it's not a huge amount of distance. It's essentially 10,000 meters that he runs but he's running all of those 10,000 meters extremely fast. So how did this work? Well, uh, uh, this, this is going to run hard around this curve and then we broke lanes. This is Peter Snell the here. Case of settling in. I'm settled in the second last place. Snell is famous for having never lost a race at either 800 meters or 1500 meters. Then comes curve West Indies. And Alan, New Zealand, and Mount of Belgium.
So here's Schnell. He's right here at the back in the black of New Zealand. So it's two laps, 800 meters. There he is. He just stays patient and can run right through the middle. And because he's done so much distance, he's got a lot of aerobic capacity there. Okay, so, so Peter Snell was famous for never having lost a race. In his whole career, he didn't lose a single race over either 800 meters or 1500 meters. But he's running, you saw the whole race. That was a minute, 50 seconds, maybe. And that was his whole Olympic race. And yet, in his daily training, he's running 20 plus miles. And so what you're looking at here is basically this idea of if you run long and slow, you can build your aerobic engine. And so you can be a great athlete. Schnell actually came to UC Davis and did a, a, a little bit of undergrad and his, his master's degree here. And then he went on to become an exercise physiologist doing his PhD in Houston. So, so you know, there is a nice Davis connection there. Now, when we look from Peter Snell, who was a Lydiard um, long, slow distance, you can see that was really effective. Three gold medals, never lost a race in his whole life. Well, how about Emil Zadopek? Now, Zadopek is equally famous. You can see he was earlier, so he's 48 through 52, whereas Snell was in the 60s. But what you can see, what you'll see here is Emil Zadopek is, is a very unique runner. He's this uh, individual, and I'll point him out to you here, He's very easy to see once he gets going because he makes this horrible, painful face the whole time he runs. But you can see, and this is him right here. Um, he is right here on the inside, the first in the red. So that's him. You can see it looks like he's in total pain the whole time. It looks like he's going to do horribly. And he's in fourth place here in the 5,000 meters. But then eh, I'm ready. And he just goes. And he's like shot out of a cannon. This guy, he shot that guy and he fell on his, on his stomach. But you can see these guys just incredible ability to tear, tear away from other people because you know, he had trained to run fast. How, how did he do? Silver medal and then four gold medals. And in Helsinki, he won three gold medals, 5,000, 10,000 and a marathon. Never ever done before, never ever done since. This marathon that he won the championship of, he won the Olympic championship of the marathon here. That was the first time he'd ever run a marathon. And the way that he'd run is he ran together with the person who was the favorite to win the race until he got bored because they were running so slowly and then he just took off. And either he was going to win the race or he was going to be, he was going to totally bonk and, and just collapse. But the result was that he won three gold medals in Helsinki. Again, telling us that if you train at a very high intensity, you can have incredible success as an endurance athlete. So now we've got two very different training methodologies. You run in for a long distance slowly, or you run short distances really fast. Both of them seem to work. So then the question is, which one do we do? Why is it, and is it real that both of them work? And the reality is that, yeah, the science tells us exactly the same thing. So this is a scientific study done by Marty Gabala out of McMaster University. And what he did is he did three weeks of training and the groups were either the sprint interval group or the endurance trained group. And the endurance trained group would work out three times a week doing between 60 and 90 minutes of continuous exercise. So they would come in the first week, they did 60 minutes, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, they came in the next week, 75 minutes, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. They came in the last week, 90 minutes, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So you can see they did a huge volume of exercise. In the sprint interval group, they, did, they started with six 30-second sprints, where they'd sprint as hard as they could on the bike, and then they'd rest for four minutes. Sprint as hard as they could on the bike, and they rest for four minutes. I should say they did it four times the first week, five times the second week, six times the third week. So by the end of it, the sixth week, or the third week, I should say, they're doing a total of three minutes of high intensity exercise. 
So then what they did is they did a, a time trial where they, where they had to go for a 60 minute time trial. And you can see before training, here's the group. And what you'd see, nice decrease in the amount of time it took them to do it. So they did it five minutes faster. And they actually did it exactly the same improvement as the group that cycled and cycled and cycled for 60 to 90 minutes. So in one group, they're cycling 90 minutes three times a week. In the other group, they're cycling three minutes six times or three times a week. Their improvement in endurance is exactly the same. Just like Zatapec, the sprint interval, versus Lydiard, the long, slow endurance training. Okay? And so whether you're doing high intensity or low intensity doesn't seem to matter. Both improve endurance capacity. 